Hey guys, it's Mac from Rev. Wanted to do a quick check in here for some of the testing that we did out on our warehouse with our drivetrains. So we went ahead and took our channel drivetrain as well as a mechanism drivetrain that looks a little bit familiar from last year um, and wanted to run it on this year's field. We also took one of our class bots that we had rolling around just to kind of see what that's going to look like. So let's look at some of that footage. So first we have our channel drivetrain and if you're not silly and you just go ahead and try to send it, um, it does seem to work out okay. It may get caught a little bit as it did in the first run, uh, but makes it out of that one. The one thing to note though is that you really can't get over it when you're going in reverse. The extrusion kind of prevents that from happening. So maybe a little bit of a change there could get this drivetrain up and over those ends. Next, let's take a quick look at the Mechanum drivetrain. This one just does not have the ground clearance or the oomph to be able to get up and over. So it just basically runs against it. Uh, would likely need to do some redesign here, either making the robot smaller to be able to navigate or maybe changing where the wheel lo location is to give a little bit more ground clearance to potentially help it get up and over that hump. And then last, we end up having our class bot, which can make it up and over, uh, but once you get those Omni wheels kind of stuck, um, since they're not powered, uh, it can kind of be an issue. So if you are looking at making a more simplistic drivetrain, it's probably beneficial to have it where all your wheels are going to be powered so you're able to kind of make sure that you get up and over those obstacles. So one of the things that we're going to kind of take from here is doing a few minor adjustments to our channel drivetrain. One of the things that we want to kind of try to do is see if there's a way that we're able to make this thing a little bit smaller and maybe get through the gap that's on the end. It's somewhere around 13 inches from what I remember. So that's going to be the goal with that robot. The second thing that we're going to want to try to do is see if we're able to modify uh, one of these where we're able to get a little bit more ground clearance. So likely we're going to throw some pillow blocks uh, to get some wheels up off the ground a little bit and replace one of the sprockets that we're running with gears um, just so that we're able to kind of get that power transfer to those wheels. We're going to see how that also behaves and maybe we'll stumble on to a solution that would work for a lot of people that's pretty quick. So check back in with us here in a little bit and we'll have some more testing for those builds as well.